first ever arrest in uh, the VVIP chopper scam. Ex Air Chief SP Tyagi has been arrested along with his Kazi and lawyer Gautam Khetan. We have with us on the phone line Christian Michelle James. Uh, thanks so much for speaking to India today. Mr. Uh, Michelle, your first reaction? Yes, well, I am, I am surprised that they've picked up the chief. Um, I don't know how deeply involved he was, but um, I didn't think it necessitated an arrest. But um, I'm waiting to catch up on the news like everybody else, see what he's accused of. Right. Uh, you know, Christian Michel, uh, along with uh, SP Tyagi, Julie Tyagi and uh, Gautam Khetan, there have been others also who have been accused uh, in the VVIP chopper scam. It's also been alleged that you act as a, you acted as a middleman. Did you ever interact with SP Tyagi? No, no. I have met Julie Tyagi though, which um, uh, was a social event. But um, I've not interacted with the uh, the chief. And, but, um, and, sorry, yes. and do you think that uh, there were kickbacks were that were paid uh, either through Julie Tyagi or directly to SP Tyagi for trying to influence this chopper deal? But what, I, what I can say is this happened before I came into the picture, um, the, the so-called changing of the altitude, which I, I don't know about and um, have some issues with. Um, the only thing is I do know that Titan, um, from what I've read in the phone taps, was heavily involved in arranging companies and transfers to Mauritius. And that has to be an interesting area that needs investigating. And uh, Mr. Michel, what was your role in this uh, chopper deal? Well, as I've, as I've said all along, my role was technical. I came in uh, after the, um, the changes to the um, 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 requirements were made. And my, my work was in preparation, in implementation, and in management. And that's, that's what my contract stated, which was signed after the deal was signed and has been given to the authorities for vetting. And I believe it was a legal contract and no one had a problem with it. All right. And uh, you, you're saying that your role was basically of management. What do you mean by management? D did it involve meetings with bureaucrats uh, and other government officials? No, I had no meetings with any officials or anyone who had a role to play in influencing the deal which I've demonstrated repeatedly. And there's been no evidence found of any um, incorrect payments or any meetings with any officials whatsoever. And uh, you're saying you did meet Julie Tyagi at a social event. Uh, was the deal ever discussed with him? Yes, no, I've been asked about that. Not, as, not in terms of technical or, um, or focus. In terms of what's generally happening in India, I'm sure, I'm sure we would have discussed it, but not in detail. All right, and you have been named by the Indian Enforcement Directorate uh, in what's being called a money laundering uh, scandal. You also, there's also a fresh, open-ended, non-bailable warrant that was issued against you in uh, December this year, early about the second of the December. How do you react to these uh, cases that are being filed against you? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm still, my lawyer is trying to get hold of the charge sheet. We haven't been sent it. We haven't been able to acquire it yet. So it's difficult to give a reaction. The only thing I can react to is what's stated in the press, that it says something like six crores were laundered um, and doesn't give a date. But I imagine they're talking about 2005, or certainly many years before the VVIP deal was signed. So I don't see how that's relevant. And when they talk about six crores, they're looking for 200 and 300 crores. And with me, it's talking about six crores. So it doesn't make any sense to me. All right, but as I've not been able to access the charge sheet, I, I can't really comment just yet. But I'm hoping to very soon. All right, you're saying that you can't really comment on the charges that have been leveled against you because you've not managed to get your hands on the charge sheet. But you're saying you came into the picture after guidelines for the purchase had been changed. And your role was to ensure that the deal does go through. What are the kind of meetings that you held uh, while in India? And with whom? Yeah, well, I mean, I was, uh, meetings I was holding in India were with the, uh, with the company discussing um, things like the, the technical the support, the uh, level of imp implementation for spares, all of these issues, the legal issues. Um, all of that uh, my job. And there were about 20 or 30 um, different functions I had, which I think I had discussed with your channel many, many months ago, gave them details of it. Absolutely. You've in fact given us an exclusive interview earlier this uh, month. There's of course been a big development now. First few arrests in the VVIP chopper deal. These people have been accused of influencing the deal and uh, receiving kickbacks. Did you at any stage hear of kickbacks being paid to SP Tyagi or Julie Tyagi or to uh, their lawyer? 
No, only what I've heard in the press. And that, that's where all the information comes, which is public domain now. But um, during the, the development of the, the program, I never heard of any of that. And certainly not with any serving official. All right. And, and you're saying you didn't uh, hold any meetings with any bureaucrats. Did you hold any meetings with uh, any army personnel or defense personnel or uh, somebody from the Air Force? No, no. The only, the only people we, who we ever engaged with or I ever engaged with was retired personnel who were, law, who were legally allowed to comment and give advice. No one else. And you're saying you didn't meet any politicians either? No, no. It's not, it was not my, not my remit. What, were there other people in the company who were holding discussions with the bureaucrats or officials in the armed forces in India? No, only officially. Only um, organized meetings um, as arranged between the, uh, the official parties. No other meeting. And, you know, uh, the, de the defense minister, the current defense minister, also uh, made a statement uh, earlier this year where he said that uh, an invin invincible hand seemed to be guiding action or inaction of investigating uh, agencies in India as far as the chopper scam uh, is concerned. Uh, were you surprised that action was taken much later after the, after the, the after discrepancies were first uh, spotted? Well, it, it's, been a, it's been a very f strange affair because we had the, the court hearings in Italy, which um, um, didn't, as far as I was concerned, didn't bring out anything new. And then it died away, and I was um, moving forward, and then the whole thing came up again on the same basis. So we seem to be, seem to be on the second round of the same subject. So um, it has been a surprising process, and very long. And are you, you are you surprised by these arrests that have been made by the CBI now? Well, not, not of Kaitan, because he's heavily involved. I mean, the phone taps I've read um, are, are very um, prejudicial. So that doesn't surprise me. It does surprise me that Tiagi, the air chief, has been arrested. Because what kind, of, what kind of phone taps have you uh, read? Well, ones where um, um, Kaitan is, is spoken about by Hashki and Carlo Juerso has been involved in money laundering and setting up structures to, to move money to Mauritius. All right. That's what's come out in the phone taps. But how so are they involved key. with SP Tiagi? Uh, that I don't know. That part I, I don't understand. But that's really, that's really where the hash key comes in. But Mr. Michelle, I also want to find out why is it that you've never responded to any of the charges that have been leveled against you by the Indian investigation agencies? Well, it's very difficult when you can't get hold of the charge sheet. Have they not it's tried to uh, contact you? Nope, nope, nobody has. But that's I'm surprising considering that there's way. a non-bailable warrant, a conditional non-bailable warrant that's been issued. There's uh, the enforcement directorate has named you in a money laundering case. You're saying they've mm -hmm. never tried to contact you? No, 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 they haven't. And I'm available for an interview and trying to obtain the opportunity of an interview. But so far, nothing. All right. Uh, can you share, can you give us some more details about the conditions that were changed uh, as far as procurement requirements uh, in India were concerned to enable this deal to go through? Well, th this is again where I have an issue. Um, a lot of the things said in Parliament were completely wrong. You know, things like the cabin height. The cabin height has not changed. The cabin height was... was um, arranged around the Mil-17 um, along with a lot of the other performances because that was the aircraft they were specifying um, and it didn't, requ it didn't turn into a single tender it made it a multiple tender and actually I thought at the time that the, um, the Russian product would win and was very surprised when they withdrew from the tender because the tender was written around the Russian product and that, that's where the misconcepts are um, spreading because um, what was said in Parliament was wrong you're saying what was said in Parliament was wrong, but now you have, there's a change of guard that's happened at the centre here in India. The current government uh, is sort of uh, alleging that there seemed to be an invisible hand that was guiding uh, action or inaction. And you're saying that there were never any interactions with any uh, ministers in the government. You're saying you personally did not sit through any of the meetings. Did you know of any other officials from uh, Augusta Western or Finn Mechanica that actually attended uh, any of these meetings? How did, when, when, when these uh, guidelines were in fact changed, who, who all sat down in a meeting, who drafted these papers, and how did they go through? There must have been some sort of uh, interface. Yeah, well, I mean, it's been well documented. There's a lot of internal meetings inside the minister and the user about the uh, specifications, which the specifications, the way they were written, required a single tender. Only one product could meet it. They were then um, altered. A new specification.
specifications were written around the Mill 17, um, which was the, the exact match for what they required, um, which is why I was very surprised when the Russians pulled out of it. But this was done internally inside the Ministry of Defense. So it's not, it's not something manufacturers were involved with at all. And actually a very, very surprising piece of news, which people are not aware of, is the, the Italian English product could meet the height. And that was written to, uh, that was written about to the MOD by Mr. Westland, uh, back in 2005, I think. And, uh, so they could the required altitude. and Christian Michel, can you once again uh, explain uh, to us your role in the Augusta Westland chopper deal? How did you come into play? Were you working for the company? Were you an employee of the company? How do, how do you uh, sort of explain your role in this uh, case? No, I was advising the British company, which was not involved with the, um, the BVIP, right up until the end of um, 2006, when the then chairman of um, uh, Augusta, Italy, asked me to come in and explain how the procurement process worked, the technical management of, uh, of the process and the DPP and all the things, as they didn't understand it. So I gave them a technical briefing, and then from then on became a technical advisor. And that's it. That was my role. And did you ever did you did you visit India? And if you did, on uh, on how many occasions were you able to actually set up meetings with officials here? Oh, no, we didn't. It was my job to set up meetings. If they wanted meetings, they write officially and get them. You know, all manufacturers were able to have meetings and discuss the uh, the program. That was not my role at all. But um, of course, I travelled to India many times. I like the country. Um, I go there for weekends whenever I could. I uh, would uh, um, develop all sorts of businesses there. I had other business in India, so I had, had many trips to India, many, many. And it's and it's it's completely remarkable uh, and actually shocking that you're saying that none of the Indian investigating agencies have ever tried to contact you, even though you're willing, you're willing to actually participate and you're willing to answer questions. You're saying you're not even been emailed a questionnaire by these investigating agencies. No, it's not shocking. It's disappointing. I'm disappointed. I want to assist. I believe I have things which would help the investigation, but nobody's contacting me. Do you want to contact them, considering uh, the, the kind of bad publicity that you're getting in this case? Oh, we have. Don't worry. My lawyers have been in touch many times with them, offering my, um, my availability. All right. Uh, Christian Michel, thanks so much for speaking to India Today. That was uh, British National uh, Christian Michel speaking exclusively to India Today from Abu Dhabi, saying that uh, he actually wants to be questioned by the ED and the CBI, but these investigating agencies haven't really contacted him or asked him to explain his role in the controversial Augusta Westland chopper deal. The big news update that we're tracking this uh, evening, SP Tyagi, Julie Tyagi and uh, their lawyer has been arrested by the CBI. They're likely to be produced uh, before a special court either later this evening or tomorrow. Let's uh, go back to an exclusive interview that the former air chief gave to uh, India Today's Rajdeep Sadesai where he explained this entire controversy and spoke about uh, how he thought he was being framed and spoke about his family connections as well. Take a look. And joining me now is uh, retired air chief marshal SP Tyagi, the man who was at the center in a sense of this controversy. But a big day for you today, sir. Because India today has accessed a certified English translation of the court in Italy, which not only acquits you, but says there was no scam whatsoever in the purchase of Augusta Westland. Do you feel today vindicated? Yes, I am vindicated. Uh, in fact, Rajdeep, uh, I knew the truth. Remember, I, while you know, all sorts of stories might have been told, but I knew the truth. I knew that we had done a decent job. I knew, knew we had done an honest job. When I say we, I mean all of us in the Indian Air Force. Uh, and there was no truth in the allegations. So whilst I'm happy that the Italian courts have said what they have said, uh, I always knew the truth. You always knew the truth, but in a sense, the public didn't know the truth and the public in a sense yes. saw you as an air chief marshal who was almost in the dock. So, in that sense, do you feel your honor is being restored as a result if the Italian court, it, it, it's taking an Italian court to possibly restore your honor as a soldier? Yes, uh, many of the Italians have actually come on record on the television and said, we are so glad that Marshal Tiagi, as they, as they use the term, that his honor has been restored. But my honor will be fully restored when the Indian end. 
of when this the investigation. So you're saying only when the CBI closes the case will your honor truly be restored because you it would appear that the Indian system has failed you. If if it uh, if this story now plays out in the way it does and the CBI also finds no evidence and closes the case then you're saying your honor will be truly restored. That is true. I what the Italian court says is only one thing. I want the Indian system to say that the Indian air Ch chief or former air chief has been wronged. I want the Indian system to vindicate. I want the Indian system to say, okay, we have, okay, we've had an inquiry, that's history. We are having an inquiry, in fact. But when that system vindicates me, I will actually feel happy. Are you feeling today that the Indian system in that sense failed you, sir? Well, the manner in which the case yes. played out in the media, in the CBI, the political establishment, the UPA going ahead and cancelling the Augusta Westland deal, you were in a sense ostracized, dare I use that word. Did the Indian system fail you, sir? I believe yes. I believe yes. Why is an honest man hounded? Why is an honest system hounded? Not only me, remember what it did to my family, my personal life, my friends. But also remember what it did to the Indian Air Force. This has been an unhappy chapter. In a sense, it's done to the Indian Air Force uh, damage, you believe, in terms of morale, in terms of, uh, in terms of officers thinking twice now before uh, going to the defense establishment and saying they want a particular aircraft. Do you believe that this, it's not just the honor of an individual. But are you asking for the honor of the Air Force to be restored in that sense? In a sense, yes. But uh, Radhip, I have a slightly different viewpoint on this. I believe the Indian Air Force is strong enough. I have heard that people used to put files away after Bofors. No, I think Indian Air Force is a very professional service. They will not hesitate to say the right things, this case or any other case. I do believe that we will continue to, as we have done in the past, we will continue to uh, do our job honestly with great integrity. Uh, please, rest be assured. But that IAF will not, will not step back. But do you feel that the government believed Italian prosecutors but not its own air chief? I don't know whether they believed me or not. I actually, maybe they believe me. I, I believe the circumstances, you just, you know, in two years we, we can go back in history. Look at what the state was, how the government was being under enormous pressure, how the word scam was every second word that the television channels were using. Maybe I, I, this just got caught in that. Uh, I, I believe in another time and another day it wouldn't have taken the turn that it has. I was therefore saying that the UPA government of the time and the defense minister A.K. Antony got carried away by all the surround sound and should have waited before scrapping the contract on mere allegations or in a sense allowing FIRs to be filed without actually going through the case. I will not comment on the government of the day that I served, uh, Rajdeep, I will not. But I will like to say one thing, that it is the job of those who are elected to protect this nation and to run the government to say, to believe in the truth and if, when they know the truth, and this time they knew the truth, then to thumb the table and say, this is job has been done honestly with integrity. Remember all, uh, after all, uh, these statements have been made on the floor of the parliament, on their websites, by the CAG, by all the Indian systems, all the papers were with us. Two governments, Rajdeep, it's not. Two governments have taken the same view on this case. Two and to PMOs, say, two yes, NSAs, yes. more than one air chief took the same view on the Augusta Westland the chopper case. Who's who of India? Please understand when this decision was taken, the NSA was chairing it, the director IB was there, the SPG boss was there, the secretary security was there, the defense secretary was there, and the deputy chief of ESA was there. It, it was a collective decision. And you became the fall guy in that sense? I would like to believe yes. And therefore, in conclusion, I'm going to ask you, Air Chief Marshal, as you said, you expect the CBI today to be, do the honorable thing and publicly acknowledge that they made the mistake or you expect the defense establishment at the time, the political establishment at the time to publicly acknowledge that they made a mistake, only then will your honor be fully restored. 
I believe the CBI will have to do it. It has started an investigation. There is a process. I have served the government, so I understand it. There is a process. They will have to complete the process. Finally, their conclusion has to be the same as that of the Italian court because it is based on the same evidence on the same papers. Italian court has quoted all the papers from the Indian system. What are our policies? What what is uh, how how we go about? Who's the decision maker? I had no part to play in the decision making. That's what the Italian courts are saying. I'm sure that the Indian investigative agencies will come to the same conclusion. They cannot come to any other conclusion. And when that happens, I'll be a very happy man. But I also believe that because of not only an individual, but a service has been fingers have been pointed at a service and, and the former service chief, I believe it will be in order for people to say, okay, whatever happened is over, and I think the honor of everybody must be restored. I can see your eyes in a sense welling up, sir, and I can see your voice choking. So obviously for you, this has been a very difficult oh, period. Oh, Rajdeep, this for me, for my family, for my friends, for everybody, very difficult time. 44 years I wore that uniform. 44 years I served. I fought two wars. The end has been unpleasant. Well, I hope that there is a happy ending. If uh, the government has its dignity, uh, if the government can restore your honor, I hope there will be a happy ending, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Air Chief Marshal Tiagi there on possibly the scam that wasn't. That was uh, S.P. Tyagi speaking to India today's uh, Rajdeep Sardesai in the summer of last year after he was given a clean chit by the Italian court. Now, he has been arrested by the CBI today for uh, allegedly trying to influence the Augusta Western Chopper deal. We have our deputy editor, Atir Khan, who's with us live. Atir, uh, three arrests today, the first arrest in the VVIP Chopper scam. Uh, what's the road ahead? Are they likely to be produced in court today as well, today itself? Well, that's right. Uh, this is for the first time that a former air chief has been arrested uh, in, in, in a case of corruption. Uh, and it is a major breakthrough, uh, as has been claimed by the CBI, because they were working on some fresh leads. And we know that his brother, his cousin brother, Sanjeev Tyagi, who is also known as Julie Tyagi, has also been arrested. Gautam Khetan is the third person who has been arrested in this case. Now, we know that Gautam Khetan had already been arrested by the enforcement directorate uh, during their investigations into the same probe. Uh, we know from our sources in CBI that CBI had written several uh, letter, letter rogatories to various countries seeking details. And therefore, now, uh, now they are in possession of those evidence and they have gone ahead and arrested uh, uh, S.P. Tiagi, who's been interrogated several times uh, by the CBI in this case. Arthur, what is this evidence that the CBI is talking about considering that S.P. Tiagi has managed to get a clean chit from the Italian court? Well, uh, that's right. Uh, but now the CBI was working on certain leads which they, they had received and it was different from what the Italian courts, uh, uh, the uh, Italian authorities had produced as evidence. And therefore, there was, uh, uh, you know, the investigations that also uh, managed to establish that SP Tiagi also had meetings with the two agents which were sent by Augusta Westland, uh, Gerosha and Heshke, uh, uh, most probably in Bangalore. And thereafter, uh, you know, the ED probe have also revealed that Sanjeev Tiagi had received some more than six, uh, six crore rupees uh, for, for uh, you know, as a kickback. Uh, moreover, we know that Gautam Khetan had been playing uh, uh, another role as, a, you know, he was trying to round trip the funds, get the kickbacks through various routes and uh, for further distribution. So it is, it was a well-oiled machinery, that's what the CBI is saying, which led to this, uh, you know, the corruption and therefore they have been arrested. The CBI is tight lipped about the evidence, fresh evidence they've got so far. Right. Ati, thanks so much for those details. We're going to keep coming back to you uh, for more developments. This is the big story. We're tracking first arrest uh, in the VVIP chopper scam. SP Tyagi, former air chief, his cousin Julie Tyagi and lawyer Gautam Khetan have been arrested in the VVIP chopper scandal.